Hey everyone, Steve here. In this video, we're going to look at two really helpful tips that when you're connecting an Excel workbook to a Power BI semantic model, really can help your end users use your semantic model a lot easier. Some tips and tricks just to help them guide them through the Excel. So now that I have a semantic model already published, I'm going to connect in Excel by going to the data tab, get data from Power Platform from Power BI. I'm going to search for my model, which is turnover, and I'm going to insert a pivot table. Now that pivot table has been inserted directly linked to my semantic model. However, if you look down, you'll see that I have a couple of measures here in the top in the separate tables. They always put the measures at the top and I have a few. If I scroll down, there's also some extra tables such as a parameter and a time intelligence. That's really only meant for use in Power BI. It's not very good and it doesn't translate well to Excel. So what I can do is I can actually set up a perspective to limit what people see in the Excel. Now we had a video before on how to connect two perspectives directly in Power BI Live Connect mode. I'm going to switch over to uh, my tabular editor two instance, which is connected to this semantic model. You'll see here in the model under perspectives, I have two perspectives already set up. Now, if you're interested in learning how to set these up, there's a link in the description of the video, which tells you how you can go through and set these up. But for interest of time, these are already in my model. You'll see one is named sales and one is named Excel. So now switching back to my Excel sheet, what I can do is I can leverage these in Excel. In the data tab, I'm going to go to queries and connections, and you'll see that I have this connection, which is this pivot table, connection to my semantic model. If I right click this and go to properties, you'll see here there's some properties I can actually update on this connection. I can change how often I want it to refresh, meaning it can also refresh automatically everyone every time someone opens the file, which is quite useful. I'm going to go to the definition however, and I'm going to rename the command text. And instead of model, which is the whole model, I want to just connect to Excel. And this is connecting to that perspective Excel. And now I'm actually going to rename this connection so that I know exactly what it is. So after saying uh, turn over Excel, rename the command seg text to Excel in the definition if I click OK, after a few seconds, this updates. Now, if I click back on my pivot table and go to the fields, you'll see that this has limited what I can see in my model to that perspective. So now I only have things relevant to Excel and things that make sense in Excel. So perspectives are very, very useful. I might go to another page I'm going to insert get data from database from Power Platform from Power BI. I'm going to search for my turnover again, and I'm going to insert another pivot table. I'm just really doing this to make the connection. Now, again, I've got the, the full model. What now I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my queries and connections here, and you'll notice they stay open in the tabs. I'm going to right click this new connection called turnover and i'm just going to name this full model and in the definition i'm going to leave it a model so this is the full version so now i've created two separate connections from now on whenever i want to create a new pivot table i can simply go to insert pivot table from external data source and I can choose one of my connections. This means that I can choose the Excel or the full model or as many perspectives as I want to set up and just keep reusing the same connection so that um, all the connection details are the same for all of the pivot tables that I want them to be. And I just have perspectives. And remember, perspectives are views only. They're not security of any kind and they should never be used as security because somebody could easily come in here and change the command text. 
So now let's go to a pre-built pivot table I have. You'll see I'm using the Excel perspective to make it nice and easy and only see the fields relevant. I put in the, the date and a few columns. Now Excel has a built-in drill through feature, which if I see a number of interest, for example, December 21, I can actually double click. And now it's going to expand this and show me more details about this specific cell filtered to any of the rows and columns and filters that I've applied. However, it automatically picks a bunch of columns and this is not really useful information to me. It's not really diving into really what I want to see. So I'm going to delete this. And now I'm going to go back to my tabular editor and you'll see in my profit margin percent, I've pre-built a drill through table. If I click on the profit margin percent under the property here, I have the expression, which is the DAX expression, but I also have options to alter the format string expression, which we have another video on, or the detail rows expression. Now the detail rows expression is the drill through that Excel uses. This has to return a table. So I've just written a simple summarized columns saying I want to see the product name, country, the cost of goods sold, sales amount on the margin. So this is on the profit margin percent measure, and it has this expression as the detail rows expression. Now, if I go back to my model, and this has already been published, if I drill through to the profit margin percent, which has this detailed rows expression, when I double click on this, it's going to run that DAX expression filtered for the, the rows and the columns and the filters that I have, and then actually show me something that is useful, right? And this is the return of that DAX expression that I wrote earlier. There you have it. Hopefully those two tips were helpful. Please let us know in the comments. Like and subscribe and really helps us out. And let us know if there's anything else you want us to cover.